Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for joining us for today's worship service. And today's discipleship Sunday. And um, before Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, His last words to His disciples was Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Now, which, now what we know as the Great Commission. Uh, when He told His disciples to disciple all people and all nations. Now, um, our church as we our church moves into a disciple making church discipleship is not a propaganda it's not a program just that the church wants you see let me share a, my testimony about discipleship I'm a product or my discipler is our elder Divya his discipler was elder Andrew and frankly speaking I would be in church today or where I am in church today without the two of them um, it's not that they proposed to me a program or something for me to follow. But it is because, I know I've said this before, but it is now how they have reflected Christ to me. How they have shown me uh, the walk, walking with Christ may be hard, but it is a walk that someone is willing to take. Hopefully, you as a listener here has found someone to disciple you or you are also discipling other people. Right now, our church has a disciple for from the youngest up to the oldest person in our church. Hopefully, if you do not have a group, you will find it in your heart to find a discipleship group that will fit you, your age, and your personality. Hopefully, it will you, you'll be able to, in prayer, even in these tough times of the pandemic, you will still be able to find a discipleship group and a discipleship group leader that will reflect Jesus Christ to you. And... Um, Hopefully, it will become a real experience to you walking with, walking with that person in your walk with God as you walk together in knowing God. And for today's program, our praise and worship will be led by our brother Adrian Cheng and a personal testimony will be given by Sister Sabrina Kotoko and our pastoral prayer will be given by Pastor Elmer Huang. And our scripture reading will be given our, by our brother Vixon Jevontan. And the scripture is from 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and 5. Our message for today is about, you know, the Christian life is about following the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus urged his disciples to do as he has been doing as his followers. We are called to be more like him in every way. We are to walk as Jesus did. How are you in following Jesus today? Pastor Greg Rowasa will share to us from God's Word his message entitled, Walk Like Jesus. Let us listen and see how each of us can be a disciple who will truly follow after him. And afterwards, the benediction will be given by our senior pastor, Reverend Alexander Uy. Thank you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mapasa amin ang karian mo, sundin na loob mo, dito sa lupa, para lang sa langit. So, kiyang yung abin yu, kinadit suho gun. Ngayon wa man ta chay. Luo tong wa man ngayon lo ran ta chay. U tiyaw wa man yi tiyan shi tan. Tiyo wa man tuo li siyong e. Rawa, ratsyan na jak, ditano paap, le prakit pen kong praong.
Good morning. As we sing our first song, let us remember how amazing, how awesome, how wonderful our God is. That He created the stars, He created the sun, He created everything around us. And that no one and nothing can ever compare to our God. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Your mercy flows like a river wide and healing comes from your Suffering children are safe in your arms. There is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Your mercy flows like a river wide and healing comes from your Suffering children are safe in your arms. There is none like you. Oh, there is none like you. None like you, Lord. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, there is really none like you. No one compares to you. And we thank you, Lord, because even so, day by day, step by step, you are still our shepherd. You lead us and you guide us. We thank you, Lord, because in every circumstance, whether in hardship or in peaceful times, you are the same faithful, sovereign, and incomparable God who is before us, holding our hand and walking with us in every step of the way. Lord, may we be sensitive to your voice, hold firmly to your hand, and follow wherever you lead. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort fraught. What Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom, by water still or troubled sea, still tis his hand that leadeth me. Hi, good morning. This is Sabrina Kotoko. I'm a member of One Discipleship Group. This group is spearheaded by Sister Jane Lee. It took me long years before I can join a group for the mere reason that my teaching job consumed all my strength and time. It's only after I filed my early resignation that I finally decided to accept Sister Rowena's invitation to join her group. How did joining a discipleship group affect my spiritual growth? 
it changed me in three different ways. First, the commitment to be a member of the group becomes a priority to me. Meeting my group every Wednesday night at 8.30 allows my mentor, my sisters in Christ, and me to grow in our prayer life. It also enables us to be united in studying and learning about God. During this lockdown, we spend time reading and reflecting on the book Spotting the Sacred by Bruce Ming. This book helped us to notice God in the most unlikely places and situations. This book has encouraged me to focus on how God is working in our lives. The second thing I realized was that God wanted me to touch the lives of others. Our group openly shared their trials, their fears, their worries, and their joy. I have learned to be a part of their lives. I have learned to care for them just as the Lord had cared for me. Thirdly, I anticipate meeting them through Zoom or Viber chat. It feels good to explore God's Word with them. Getting to know their insights broaden my mind about God's love and goodness. It also excites me to notice how the Lord is working in their lives. I thank God for allowing me to be a part of a discipleship group. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 to 25 says, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habits of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. To my fellow seniors, I encourage you to join a discipleship group. It's never too late to have one. Good morning. Shall we prepare our heart, mind, body, and spirit as we come before the Lord? God sees all, and we would like to worship Him with reverence always. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, Lord of all creation, everything that is in heaven and on earth belongs to you. 
You rule over all things, and nothing is more praiseworthy than you. You are to be feared, for you are extraordinary. Our life is in your hands, and because of that, we once again come before you to align ourselves to your will, that what you desire may be done on us and in this world. Only be patient with us, Father, for we are a wandering creatures, always forgetting about your goodness and love for us. We need guidance always, and we're thankful that you have given us your Son to live as examples for us, that we may follow him, remember your teachings, and obey your commands. We also thank you that you have given us your Spirit to live in us, that we may know your desire in your heart, that he enables us to live a victorious life for your glory. We are thankful that today is also a Discipleship Sunday, for we long to be followers of Jesus, to have his character as our character, and his desire, our desires, and it is also yours. We are glad to have Reverend Greg Ambrose Rawasa as our speaker this morning to share with us your word. And we ask that your Spirit's guidance to reveal your message to us clearly through him, and that our hearts will be prepared to receive it and act on it, to be more like Jesus as we grow in our faith. We also pray for our D group leaders that they will continue to walk in obedience to you, that they will live a life that pleases and honors you and exalt you above all, that they will not fail to spiritually grow themselves with the help of the Spirit who enjoys to grow in your word and in prayer. At the same time, we also fill up, lift up their group members as they are being nurtured we pray that they too will establish in you and set as good examples for others to follow, that they will be accountable to one another in living a pure and holy life. May their life be filled with the heart of Jesus and be motivated to serve others in love. We pray for our couple's ministry as they will have an event this coming July 24 <laughs> to help parents help their kids in the house to thrive during distance learning. May this talk be beneficial as you have blessed kids, blessed the kids for the parents to be the primary teacher in life. We pray for their speaker, Sister Evangeline Ko, to clearly convey relevant content that would benefit the attendees. We also pray that this will be an opportunity for them to reach out to pre-believing parents to be able to introduce them to you, the greatest father of all. We leave our missionary, Moses and Zipporah Tzu, in prayer also, as they do church planting in Creative Access Nation. It's not an easy task, especially in this pandemic uh, and with all the restrictions that they have. May they have wisdom and creativity in continually reaching out to the people in their place. As they have already started a new ministry for the family, may this be effective in touching and moving the hearts of each family as they join. We give praise to you for how you moved Sister Tao to believe in you. And we know that your work will continue in her. And we implore that she will be faithful to you, knowing you more and more through your word and discovering of your truth. We also pray that their ministry on uh, minority children's care will be a tool for them to reach the young ones, that they can share your love to them in words and with good testimony, that these children will come to know you in their young age and will not be snatched away as they grow. Heavenly Father, you desire that your good news will be spread to the afflicted, to the brokenhearted, to the captives and prisoners. Thus we commit them into your hands, and you said to ask, and we ask, that may you send people to reach the lost, and we include the, the state of the Uttar Pradesh in India, and it is home for Hinduism, whose faith is knitted, knitted with Buddhism and Jainism. It is sad that there still remains 191 people group that the gospel has yet to reach. 
We pray that you, Lord, will raise up able and dedicated Christian workers to bring the gospel to them, that it will reach the 200 million people to be able to know you who is above everything, above all gods, and above all power, and that they will respond in faith to you and give their praise to you and no one else. Lastly, we pray for our country, the Philippines, that the government will have wisdom to govern. You have placed them there, and we know there's a purpose. So help us to work with them, especially in dealing with this virus. We also pray for the unstable Taal volcano as it continues to spew volcanic plumes. There is possibility also of lava flows. We pray for the safety of the people surrounding it and that they will take precaution always. May those who are evacuated find shelter to stay and be safe, that they will learn to value their life, a life which you have given, that they may appreciate what they have and turn to you also. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. and We again acknowledge that you are God of all, and whatever we face, we will never be moved. For you, for your hand is upon all things. May our prayers reach your ears, and may your hand work in us, that your will be done in us. We con commit this prayer into your hands, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from 1 John chapter 2, verses 3-5 to 5. And by this we know that we have come to know Him. If we keep His commandments... Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Good morning. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to preach here at Grace Gospel Church. Indeed, as you celebrate your discipleship month, may the head of the church our Lord Jesus Christ, lead, guide, and counsel you as you do your efforts in fulfilling the Great Commission and finishing it for His glory. Let us all be reminded that His mission is to seek and to save the lost. He wants all of us to have His heartbeat, the heartbeat of the Great Commission, to make disciples of all nations. As a form of introduction, I heard or I read from the post, FB post of Dr. Andrew Luzon, this particular story. When Nigerian billionaire Femi Otedola in a telephone interview was asked by a radio presenter, Sir, what can you remember that made you the happiest man in life? Femi said, I have gone to four stages of happiness in life. And finally, I understood the true meaning of happiness. The first stage was to accumulate wealth and means. But at this stage, I did not get happiness. Then came the second stage, collecting valuables and items. But I realized that the effect of this thing is very temporary. The luster of valuable things do not last. Then came the third stage of getting big projects. That was when I was holding 95% of diesel supply in Nigeria and Africa. I was also the vessel, largest vessel owner in Africa and Asia. But even here, I did not get the happiness I imagined. The fourth stage was the time my friend asked me to buy wheelchairs for 200 disabled children. At my friend's request, I immediately complied. I bought 200 wheelchairs. But then uh, my friend insisted that I go with him and hand over these wheelchairs to the disabled children. There, I gave the wheelchairs to these children with my very own hands. I saw a strange glow of happiness in their faces. I saw all of them sitting on their wheelchairs, enjoying the time of their life. 
it was then that I realized this is the definition of real joy. Then when I decided to leave, one of the children grabbed my leg so tight that I tried to gently remove it. But the child kept on hugging my feet and looking at my face. I bent down and asked the child, Child, do you need anything else? The answer came that made me so happy and also changed the attitude of my life completely. The child said, I want to remember your face so that when I meet you in heaven, I will recognize you again and say thank you. For us, will someone want to remember our face? Would someone say, I want to look at your face and perhaps in heaven when I see you, I can say thank you again. As we study the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, this can be a reality. We will also hear these words. I can see Jesus in you. Our scripture reading is found in 1 John chapter 2, 3 to 6. It says, By this we know we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever follows his word in him, the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he remains in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Our main idea is our love for God is reflected in our obedience to his design and mission. Our love for God is reflected in our obedience to his design and mission. Now, how do we walk as Jesus walked? In order for us to appreciate how Jesus lived his life, we need to visit his growing up years. Let us see God's design in the life of our Lord Jesus and how he walked in obedience. That is why our first point is walk in obedience to God's design. We were studying recently the preparation stage of our Lord Jesus Christ prior to his public ministry. We have very limited passages that talk about the growing up years of Jesus until his mature adulthood. But in Luke chapter 2, 41 to 52, we have an account that shows to us what was happening in the life of Jesus. As we desire to walk as Jesus did, we can discover that truly he was obedient to God's design. In Luke chapter 2, verse 46, down to verse 47, it says, Then after these days we, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and answers. We discover that at 12 years old, he was actively interacting with the religious leaders. He was listening, he was asking them questions, and at the same time, the Bible records that all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. He was not only listening, he was not only asking questions, but he was also engaged in answering them. We can safely conclude that during the formative years of Jesus, from zero to five years old, and the elementary years from six to 12 years old, Jesus was eagerly learning from his parents. He was eagerly learning from the teachers in the synagogue about the word of God. They were studying the Torah, the first five, five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, 
Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Then they proceed with the historical books, the books of wisdom, the major prophets, and even the minor prophets. Now, if we want to walk like Jesus, we should also early in our lives have the spiritual craving of the word, discovering early the wonders of God's word. Let us pray that our parents will be committed to model before us what it means to love God with all their heart, their soul, their mind, and their strength, and model before us how they could diligently obey what God is revealing from His Word so that they too can share it with us, the children. We hope we have parents who practice Proverbs 22.6, train up a child in which they would go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Now, on the other hand, may our children who are in the moldable years of their lives have receptive hearts yielded to the teaching of their parents and teachers. As they grow towards their teenage years, may they also develop the heart of our Lord Jesus, willing to listen, willing to ask questions, and have the wisdom to answer them as well. As we continue the account in Luke chapter 2, verse 48 and 50, it says, When they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I have been anxiously looking for you. And he said to them, Why is it that you're looking for me? Did I not? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand the statement which they or he had made to them. As we sincerely desire to walk like Jesus, just like the Lord Jesus found in the father's house, let us also have the zeal for the father's house. Jesus knew that to be in the Father's house was an opportunity for him to be with people who have the same hunger and thirst for God's word and for God himself. To be in the Father's house, it was an opportunity for him to experience what it means to be edified through interaction with others. As Proverbs 27, 17 says, Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. To be in the Father's house means to walk in pace with His will as He reveals them to those who earnestly seek Him. As we desire to also learn from Jesus in this passage, let us learn to seek the Lord in our personal devotions and corporate worship. Let us appreciate our parents who ingrained in us the habit early in life to regularly do personal devotions, family devotions, or even regularly bringing us to church. May we discover the benefit of being in the company of people who love God. May we also learn to express gratitude especially to our parents, our teachers, for the wise counsel they have gave, given us during our teenage years, how this wisdom became a reality as it protected us, especially during the crucial decisions that would make a big impact, a profound impact in our future. Again, in Luke chapter 2, verse 51 and 52, it says, And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and continued in subjection to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. As we desire to walk as Jesus did, 
we know that Jesus was in subjection, in submission to his parents. This means he recognized their authority over him. He obeyed them. He honored them. That's why Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now, let us also realize that Jesus was known as the carpenter's son, but he was also identified as a carpenter. In Luke chapter 6, verse 3, it says, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and J Judas and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus learned the trade of carpentry from his father. He developed the skill and the needed work habits that, he, that resulted in finding favor before man. His diligence also profited his body as he became physically fit as a carpenter and even physically fit as he did his public ministry in his mature adulthood. Jesus also continued in his growth in, in the scriptures. There is no account that records that Jesus was under a certain rabbi. But still, Jesus grew in wisdom and in favor with God. Eventually, he was recognized as a rabbi, even as he started his public ministry by 30 years old. That is why we can say that he continued in his growth in the word of God. As we also desire to follow Jesus, let us acknowledge the God-given spiritual authority of our parents. Let us gladly submit to them. Let us learn to honor them by meeting their needs as well. Let us also develop early in our lives work habits and ethics that will give us favor before God and man. Let us also learn a trade so we can provide for our family. Let us take care of our physical health so that our bodies can handle the stress of work. Another would be, let us keep on adjusting our lives so we may know how wonderfully and fearfully He has created us. He has a special call for our lives. Let us join Him and fulfill His purpose for our lives. By this, we will grow in wisdom and favor with God. So when asked the question, how do we walk as Jesus walked? First, walk in obedience to God's design. Second, walk in obedience to God's mission. As we desire to walk as Jesus did, we discover that he lived a life committed to the work which God has given him to do. This is recorded in John 17, verse 4. I have glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Having accomplished the work you have given me to do. And that is to show all of us eternal life. Jesus came so that we may have life, life abundant and meaningful, and life eternal. Life now means uh, life with Jesus, experiencing abundant and meaningful life. And life then would be the assurance of a place in heaven, finding comfort and peace in His presence. Now, the disciples saw how Jesus lived this out in 1 John chapter, 4, chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 4. It says, What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands 
concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things I write so that our joy may be made complete. Our joy may be made complete. Now, what was the message that uh, Jesus was trying to communicate? It continues in verse 5. This is the message we have heard from Him and announced to you that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Now Jesus lived His life modeling before us how to fellowship with the Father. That's why it says, God is light. And in Him, there is no darkness at all. One test to prove that we have fellowship with God is that we don't walk in darkness. Now, in order for us to have a restored fellowship with God, we need to acknowledge that we are sinners before Him. We need to humbly recognize that God sent His Son, Jesus, to be the Savior of the world. Let us put our trust in Jesus for our salvation. And that is when, as the Bible says, we are transferred from darkness into light. Recorded in Colossians 1, 13 to 14, it says, For He rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus lived his life modeling before us how to be victorious over temptation and sin. In 1 John chapter 1, 8 and 9, we read, If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When we look at the life of Jesus, He showed us how to win our battle against temptation and sin. This is recorded in the book of Luke chapter 4, 1 to 15. Jesus was tempted by the devil, and yet he came out victorious. Jesus lived out his full humanity, so we can also appropriate what he has used to defeat Satan in his temptations, uh, and we can also learn how to do that as well. Yes, we say Jesus lived a sinless life, but remember we as followers of Jesus can also experience what it means to live a life sinning less. We may not be sinless, but we sin less. Now, we only can do that if we appropriate the resources that Jesus used to combat the devil. And what are these resources? First, in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led around by the Spirit in the wilderness. So we can also humbly ask the filling of the Holy Spirit, the control of the Holy Spirit, so we may be led always by the Spirit. Second, Verse 2 says, For forty days, being tempted by the devil, he ate nothing for, for, for during these days, 
and when he had ended, he became hungry. We all know that this was not only because Jesus was on diet, but Jesus was really praying and fasting for 40 days. We can also adopt, learn how to grow in our personal prayer and fasting. As we grow in this spiritual discipline, then we can win our battle against sin. And then lastly, the devil also tried to use the word, but it was not according to how God designed it to be. That's why we should learn to use God's word according to how God intended it to be, the sword of the Spirit. Jesus had a good grip on the word of God. He answered the devil. Jesus answered him and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, in verse 4. Again, in verse 8, Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then lastly, verse 12 says, And Jesus answered and said to him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. The narrative continues, And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout the surrounding district. So here we find Jesus having victory against the devil. And we also can experience what it means to sin less. Let us walk as Jesus did. Let us appropriate all these available resources. The Holy Spirit. Let us ask that we should be daily or moment by moment filled, empowered, controlled by the Holy Spirit. Let us learn, ask the help of the Holy Spirit to teach us how to pray, to, to grow in our discipline in prayer and fasting. And ultimately, let us grow deeper in our grip, understanding, application on the Word of God. Lastly, or second to the last, in 1 John chapter 1, 10 to chapter 2, verse 2, we read, If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you, that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the appropriation, propitiation for our sins, and not only ours, but also for those of the whole world. Now Jesus lived a life so we may know him as our advocate with the Father. An advocate is a person who comes to our aid, who pleads our case to a judge. Now whenever we sin, let us quickly respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Let us agree that we have sinned against His Word, according to His Word, and humbly pray and ask for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Let us claim that Jesus indeed is our advocate before the Father. Now Jesus lived in obedience to God's command. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 and following, this is our passage or scripture reading. And let me just highlight verse 6 again. The one who says he abides in him ought to walk as in the same manner as he walked. Truly, we will be able to walk as Jesus walked when we are obedient to the commands of the Father. And one of the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, even not only to His disciples, but to all of us, is the Great Commission. Let us make disciples of all nations. When we think about this message, especially about discipleship, 
Remember, discipleship is relationship. And it starts at home. Parents discipling their own children. And that can be done when we model before our children what it means to love God and obey His Word. And again, as we seek the help of the local church, we can partner with the local church, especially in helping each one grow in the spiritual habits of prayer, the Word of God, fellowship, worship, giving, and many other spiritual disciplines that can strengthen your walk with God. Together, the home and the church, we can be effective witnesses as His disciples in the community that we belong to. Discipleship is not about materials. Discipleship is life transferring your life to another. Now, if you walk as Jesus walked, then you will transfer the life of Jesus to another. First to your children and then to others. In conclusion, Jesus shared the secret of the vine. And this is through abiding in the vine. We experience much fruit if we remain in the vine. Let us be reminded that in order for us to remain or abide in Jesus, we should always communicate with Him in prayer and have Him talk to us in His Word. And when we do that, here we experience lasting joy because we experience Him daily in our lives. In John 15, verse 10, it says, if you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be made full. Just like what I shared earlier in the story, will there be someone who would notice the difference in your life, the different kind of joy that radiates in your life. And these people will approach you and said, you know, I can see Jesus in you. And I would like to say thank you. It is our prayer that here in your church, truly all of you would walk as Jesus walked. The question again, how do we walk as Jesus walked? Walk in obedience to God's design and walk in obedience to God's mission. Our main idea, our love for God is reflected in our obedience to His design and mission. Let us pray. Father, thank you again for your word today. Seal this in each of our hearts. And I pray, O oh God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, you would allow us to walk as Jesus has walked. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
let's now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us, enabling us to live a life worthy of our calling to be His disciples, and also to help us to walk each day faithfully, following in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus. From this day forth, until we meet Him face to face, Amen and Amen. Thank you.